everyone, I'm back for another Bible study, and this one I want to talk about beating depression and maybe kind of changing your perspective on things that you might consider one way and in actuality it's another way. So um, a lot of us, and actually anyone that is anyone that's important, goes through depression. We know this because of Isaiah 40, 30. It says, even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that, want, that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall walk and not faint. Um, so there's an indication in here that at some point in your life, you're going to run across depression or weariness or, you know, they tell you not to faint and to be strong. And um, Elijah is the prime example of this. He had depression so bad, he just gave up and wanted to die. He laid next to a tree. He said, I'm not doing this anymore. It, he didn't say it in those exact words. Um, but the story goes that way and he just says, I'm not doing this anymore. And then an angel appeared to him and said, get up and you need to eat and drink and go, go along and do what you're assigned to do. So with that being said, um, this is something that affects anyone who's anyone. And it doesn't just happen, you know, just because it eventually gets to you. And um, maybe not for everyone, but for most people that are believers, depression is something that will co come upon them, especially if that's, if they have a life purpose. So Satan will do everything that he can and use all his tools to bring depression upon really important people so that they give up. So today I want to talk about how to beat this um, demon, in other words. Um, I was looking into Proverbs 8:21, and as you know, it says, life and death are in the power of the tongue, and they that love shall eat the fruit thereof. So are you feeding the good wolf? Are you feeding the bad wolf? It's that concept, except it's true. It's in the Bible, you know? So when you get up in the morning, and this is usually a Monday morning when everyone has these thoughts, or most people, even secular ones, the first thoughts that come to your mind, oh, I have to go to work again. I don't want to do this. How many times do I have to do this? Even kids in school, they go through this. So is that the first words that you need to be saying to yourself in the morning? Or should you be saying something different? Like, how can I serve the Lord today and have an impact on the world? I got another chance at the world today. I have a chance to do good. I have a chance to get the word out there to other people that don't know about God or have questions about God. Maybe that's a different way that we might want to be waking up in the morning. Um, I know I create these videos because I have a job. I, I go through this too, but I create these videos because what happens at the end of my life and it's judgment day and God says, you had a chance to tell people about the word. Why didn't you do that? So, you know, what if that question gets asked and what are you going to do? Just be like, oh, well, I read the Bible to myself. I studied this by myself. And yeah, you could have just got on YouTube and shared it with everyone. Not to give anyone a guilt trip or anything. But for me, I need to do something like this. Because otherwise, I'm going to live with the guilt of not being able to help people. And I had a chance to. So um, it says if you are to work, um, you're going to you're gonna work as if you're doing it for the Lord. Um that's uh, Colossians. So, yeah, it's in Colossians. I don't remember the verse, but it says, Whatever you do, do, you do it wholeheartedly to the Lord and not unto men. So whatever job you have, whenever you go in there, you're doing that for the Lord. You're not doing it for men. And that's, that's how God says to go about it. So try to keep that in mind in the morning when you wake up and you just feel so bad about life because you have to go in to work or do something that you really don't want to do, like clean the house or it's a laundry day and that's the day that you hate the most. Um, try to keep these things in mind that you're doing it for the Lord and just try to 
be glad in that. <laughs> as much as I say, like, try to be glad, we do have to try. Um, 1 Peter 3.10, for whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and from his lips and from speaking deceit. So why are we going to wake up in the morning and start speaking these words over ourselves and say, oh, what another day? We need to stay away from that because the Bible clearly says what we're going to speak life over ourselves. We have to fight this. I mean, even Elijah, one of like a hero in the Bible that defeated Jezebel, had to fight this himself. Um, we're no one special. We're all human. We all go through this. And I'm just trying to help you guys to make aware more so of how to go about it. Um, Philippians 4, 8, it says, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good of good rapport, if there is any of virtue and if there is any of praise that are praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Meditate on these things. It says, if there is anything that is good or praiseworthy, meditate on these things. That means if your day was so bad, so, so bad, but that one thing happened, like you saw a star fall from, from the sky and it just made your life feel better. You meditate on the things, those things. It says meditate. There's a reason that it says meditate on these things. Um, that's advice from God, you know. Whatever is pure, whatever is noble, we're going to meditate on it. And that's what we need to be doing. We don't need to get these distractions and say, what if? And we need to meditate on everything that's good according to the Bible. That's what it says to do. Um, trying to think here if I have any other points to go over. Um... The fruits of the Lord. I think in the last video, I was telling you guys that I was probably going to go over these fruits. So I'm going to go over them with you. The first fruit is love. The second one is joy. The third one is peace. You have patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So you want to try to possess the fruit of joy in your life. And one way a really strong way of doing this, just like the verse that I just read to you about meditate on these things. If there's just one thing that you can meditate on, do so, um, is Paul and Silas. They were praising and singing and just praising God while they were in this jail. And they, you know, they told him, you're going to be trapped in this jail. There's no way out. They're, they're cuffed, you know, to the walls and whatnot. And they just started singing and praising and they found that joy in their heart from the Holy Spirit or from God. And they just started praising God, like you're the best God and just praising God. And you all know what happens. Maybe you don't, but an earthquake came and it shook the whole building and they were able to escape. Even the doors open, the, the shackles that they all had on, they all came off and all the prisoners were, were free and they started, they were able to escape after praising the Lord. So that's just how powerful it is. Like you can be in the worst situation, but you, if there's not anything to meditate on, then meditate on God, his goodness. He will come through. And that's kind of the point that I want to get to. But then the other thing that I kind of want to change your perspective on, and I know that a lot of us have to deal with this, is that, um, you, you feel burned out or afraid and upset and you let's say you wake up in the morning and you have 20 things that you have to do well if I don't do this then so and so is going to be upset with me and then I have to do this for the kids and then I have to show up to this event and then my work's going to be um furious if x y and z doesn't happen today and my husband may not be happy with me if the meal doesn't get cooked and what if, I don't know, Joe down the street, uh, I forget about his party and I don't show up and do the Bible study with him or whatever the circumstances it is and you have all these things over your head. I want you to kind of step back and think about it and maybe change your thought on it. Like 
you don't have to impress everyone around you and you already know this. I'm quite sure if you're watching this video, you already know these things. You do not have to please everyone around you. And if somebody is upset with you about it, then that's on them. So if you already know this, then who is actually the person that is overburdening you? Is it everyone else or is it yourself? Are you too hard on yourself? And that's kind of what I wanted to, you know, point out is so many of us think that we're going to disappoint the people that care about us and actually want to see us grow. But at the end of the day, I think that it's kind of a personal thing where you think more so and about it than they do. And maybe you should be hard on yourself and give yourself a break on it. Try not to stress over all of this. Um, that's my advice to you all. And with everything that I've kind of went through uh, today with the study, I wanted to get this message out and hopefully help someone with that. So thank you very much. God bless. Bye-bye. Till next time.